Let's begin. <laughs> so we connect to our deep Ujjaya breath. And in foregrounding our breath, may we foreground our sensing, not only our, our five basic senses, but the deepest development of all those, right? our intuition, our, our sense, our internal senses, visional senses, Really, sensing is the foundation of so much of our development, our evolution as humans. Sensing our environment and in our adult, in our adult development, the accurate interpretation of our internal sensing. Accurate feeling, accurate, correct thinking. This is informs our behavior. It informs our beliefs. So doing this interior work and this sensing work is really, really important to the vitality of our, of our person. So as a really basic practice, a foundational practice, I invite you to use this time to whenever you find yourself wandering or losing track, just what can I sense, what can I feel right now? What do I feel? For those of you who want to go a little further, you can take that inquiry right into the subtle body. Right? How do I feel energetically? What's the feeling tone that arises right now? So this can be very, s very concrete, sensory-based. Ooh, I feel these muscles. I feel this pressure. I feel this stretch. I feel uh, fatigue. But we can also take it into that, ooh, I feel this emotion. Ooh, I felt a stream of thoughts scurrying through my practice. I felt a reaction. The cool thing is, is as we do these practices for periods of time, this persistent internal investigation will start to look and feel differently. We'll, we'll discover, oh my gosh, I'm growing, I'm changing. I don't feel the same things as I used to feel two, four, ten years ago. And that's pretty exciting. <laughs> So I'm going to begin with some breath work, some hand work, some feeling work. So feeling plus breathing. Let's 
Let's get right into it. I've backed up a little bit and I'm placing the finger pads. Just um, I've got eight, so I'm leaving my thumbs out of this. Right. So I have my finger pads on the ground, fingers pointing toward my legs, palm heels pointing away from my legs. And when I tack my finger pads down, I'm gently stretching the palms away from the fingertips. Now connect to a deep breath. Because here's what we want to get. It might be, I feel something, and then I, ooh, I remember to breathe. Ooh, I feel something. Oh, I have to breathe. <laughs> Until it's, I feel and I breathe. The feeling, the sensing occurs within the context of a deep, conscious breath. So just getting the sense of, ooh, I can, I can handle both of those simultaneously. One co-occurs in the other. just so valuable to have that breath work undergirding all of this sensory stuff, sensory experiences. And release. Now we're working rounds of Uddiyana. And just a reminder, we'll inhale, we'll hold, we'll exhale. And there's another hold moment at the very end of the exhale. So inhaling, getting, feeling as full with breath as possible. So the ribs expand, the chest bones lift whole body's growing omnidirectionally. Now pause, hold that breath for a moment. Now just note this, we can feel anywhere we like. I can arrange and feel the skull bones over the tailbone. Right. Bring your hands in front of your shins, swiftly exhale. We can exhale out the mouth for this technique. I'll remain empty. That's step one, just stay empty for about five counts. Our next move is pulling the belly in. So you're pulling from the perineum, the genitals, the anus. You're pulling in, you're pulling back, you're pulling up. And in all of that suctioning, pulling, drawing, emptying, what do you feel? Do you feel? Relax the belly. When you come up right, I just want to add one, one note to that. If I'm asking us, what do you feel? It is not necessary to name it. We don't have to put words on it. So we can free ourselves from language and words right now. Just have the experience. This is just a remembering Am I having an experience? What's my sensory experience? Let's do another round. Let's get the feet active this time. Inhaling, feel your ribs expand, especially those low ribs. And you'll feel those mid ribs moving. And if we got to work together yesterday, you may feel some new movement in those upper ribs and armpits and upper back. I'll pause, hold that breath, and just note, remember, we can feel inside our body and feel into the center of our body. Okay, bring your hands to the ground in front of legs, swift, thorough exhale. You can exhale out the mouth, makes it fast. <laughs> Keeping the feet active, remain empty. That's step one. Step two, 
pull the belly back. And as you're drawing the belly in and back and up, having that experience, whether it's tugging, pooling, that feeling of being underwater a little too long. Relax the belly before you feel like you need to gasp. We're going to do one more and one final um, tip. As we're doing this suctioning exhale move, I find it beneficial to keep my chin down. That keeps the activity more in the abdomen and back area than in the head and neck arena. Here we go. So we got the feet active. Inhaling out, feel your breath spreading through the low ribs and the mid ribs. Stay with that inhale. You can fill up and feel those upper ribs moving, lifting, spreading, those rib muscles working. Hold the breath. Now where we put our attention will inform what kind of experience we may be having. Bring the hands in front, exhale everything out. <laughs> Remain empty, chin down, so I'm kind of covering the front of my neck. Pull the low belly in, back and up. Have the experience. If it's pooling, have a pooling experience. If it's interesting, have an interesting experience. Release. Now when we come back upright, let's resume our deep ujjayi breath. I'm sitting in shoelace with my right ankle atop my left knee. There might be a couple of us that find this a little too intense to start off sitting. Kay. You can always put a wedge of support under the legs or even more simply, you just open up the legs until you have a, a sensation that you can work with. Kay. So I've got my right over my left. Bring the left elbow in front of the left shoulder, unlocking the shoulder. Inhaling, feet active. Ribs spreading, chest lifts. Now exhale, glide that left shoulder down. Glide this left shoulder blade down and reach elbow forward. Now if you need that massage effect of your right hand massaging that outer flap of the armpit, if that helps you, you can just get right in there and give it some little squishy squeezies. Inhale into the left side, lat and armpit. Now on me, that's an area that can get kind of sticky stuck. Exhale, draw that left shoulder down, the left shoulder blade down. Reach that elbow forward. You can be kind of squeezy squishing your lat. Just make sure you're not squeezing and squishing breast tissue. You get that muscle. Inhaling into the sides of the ribs, keeping those feet active. Exhale, glide the shoulder down, the blade down, and as you reach the elbow forward, I want you to feel and reach into the tips of every finger. Feel the littlest finger, the next finger, the middle finger, index thumb. Okay, one more, one more uh, variant. Right palm to left elbow, palm to inner elbow, deep breath. And exhaling, pull that shoulder down, press palm and elbow into one another, press, press, press. And then those chest muscles turn on, reach that elbow, press that elbow forward, reach it forward, send it forward, release. 
Let that go. Twisting toward the right thigh. Right hand on the ground. Inhale, reach that left arm over your right thigh. Exhaling, hook the left arm over your right thigh. Now, if you're feeling kind of snuggly or a little stiff today, sometimes I just grab my thigh. Right? If you have back issues, you may want to just ease out of that twist. If you're feeling kind of fluid in the, in the waist, you might hook the arm or the armpit over the thigh. So one of the things I think is really valuable about having experiential practice is not having to be tasked with interpreting, right? Have the experience now, and if you want to make meaning with it, write about it, reflect about it later, that could be a better place for reflection and interpretation. But here, just breathing, have that rich sensory experience. Can I feel breath spreading through that left side of waist and back muscles? Exhaling, using the hands. Can I feel inside my core? Does it lengthen? Does it soften? Does it rigidify? Does it tense? Can I feel and breathe? And release. Inhale, come up right. Let's unwind the legs. And now we've got left over right, unlocking the shoulder. Bring your right elbow in front of your right shoulder. Inhaling. Feel your breath spreading under this right lat and right shoulder blade, reaching into the armpit and under the collar. Exhaling, pull the right shoulder down, the right shoulder blade down. Reach your elbow forward. Take a few more breaths, repeating these moves each and every time. So if I put my attention inside the right chest wall, the chances of me feeling the right chest wall improve. I pull the shoulder down, the shoulder blade down, and reach the elbow forward. Now, slight shift. Take your left palm and put it on the inside of the right elbow. Deep inhale. And so now as you exhale, the shoulder down, add that palm press. Both of my chest muscles, pecs, turn on. I'm pushing, reaching that elbow forward, the right elbow forward. Both of them, really. Inhaling once more into the back, back of heart, shoulder blade, upper traps. Exhaling, shoulder down, blade down, palm pushes elbow. Chest muscles turn on and reach, reach, reach. Really. <laughs> Left hand beside you. Inhale, stretch your right arm over your left thigh. 
Exhaling, hook your right arm, hand arm or armpit, over thigh. Connect to your deep Ujjaya breath. And breathing and feeling. This helps us keep that experiential flame burning. Because <laughs> if I'm not breathing and I'm kind of feeling kind of feeling some stuff here and there. My sense is it tends to be more conceptual. But when we get a deep breath undergirding all of this experience, stretch and heat and tug and muscles working, I find it tends to keep it so sensory rich that it's almost, it's almost impossible to go wandering off into thought streams. One more very deep breath, reaching into the right side, waist, and hip and feeling, does my breath reach there? Does it go there? And release. Inhale, press yourself upright. Let's unwind the legs. And when we lie on back, let's have the roll Let's have the block nearby. Are you ready? Resounding yeses. Great. Lie on back. Bring feet off ground. And we'll be working this figure four iteration of these abdominals. So we'll be kind of pressing our one foot into the other thigh. All right. So inhale. Let's float the head and the shoulder blades off the ground. Then pausing right here for a moment, curl the tailbone. There's some abdominal pressure necessary, kind of like shortening the front line of the body. Exhale, left leg reaches out. Take your right foot, I'm using my right hand, I scoop it up, and I plant it in my inner left thigh. Let's take another breath for this uh, instructional round. Inhale. And now exhale, press that left inner leg into your foot, press the right foot into the leg, reach out through that inner left leg, and pull low belly down. Good. Inhale, let that up. Return the knees both over your hips. Curl tailbone. Exhale, stretch that right leg out, straightening it. Left hand, scoop up your left ankle and plant it into your thigh. Let's take another breath this round. Inhale into your low belly. So if you don't have feeling there, we're going to grow feeling there. Exhaling, press your inner right leg into your foot. Press your foot into your inner leg. Reach through that inner right leg. Pull low belly down. Inhale, we let that up. Now we're just going to go one breath per side. Curl tailbone. Exhale, left leg reaches. Right foot plants. Press. Get all the way empty of breath. Draw the low belly down. Inhale, let that up. Curl tailbone, exhale, right leg reaches, left hand, left foot. Like a tree pose, I stick that foot on the thigh. I get a little extra press, a little extra leg turn on, pull low belly down. Inhale, bend, return. 
Curl tailbone, exhaling, left leg reaches, right foot plant, press, and let that press help you generate even more reach. If you can feel that aliveness circulating through the body, pull low belly down. Inhaling, let that up, return the knees over the hips. Curl tailbone, exhale, right leg reaches, left foot, pressures the inner right thigh, press, generate even more reach, pull low belly down. Good news. Inhale, when you let that up, let's do just one more on each side. Just want to, mm-hmm. There you go. So I use that foot on my thigh. So I'm going to the inside of the thigh, Marissa. I don't know if it's on top of the thigh or on the inner thigh. Yeah, right where the roll goes. Now you press those two together. And you get all those inner left leg muscles turning on. And you get that right hip area starting to open up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Great. And after that one on each side, we'll just rest the parts down. <laughs> Grab your roll. And we'll place the roll between legs right near the pubic bones. So I'm holding the, the roll and hugging it with the inner thighs. These inner thigh muscles play such important roles in the knee, the back, the hip. Right? And these inner leg muscles are deeply, deeply involved in some of our most primal and reflexive survival responses. Okay. So what we're doing by squeezing this roll is we may elicit a little bit of excitation. And so when we have this experience, so let's make sure we get into it, legs are up, is can I breathe and have that experience? Inhaling into the low back, low belly, can you feel inside the belly, inside the pelvis, squeeze the roll. It's, if you just start to feel more of something, more of something, more, more, more. Curl tailbone, and now exhale, float the head and the shoulder blades off the ground. Now I'm letting myself get very empty of breath. You're emptying everything out, and you're still squeezing the roll. Pull low belly down. And now inhaling, set the head down and let up some of that roll squeeze. So you give your legs a break every inhalation. Hold that breath and now squeeze the roll with your inner thighs. And let those inner thighs start to feel that. Feel those muscles. You might feel the insides of the knee, curl tailbone. Exhaling, float the head and the shoulder blades off the ground. Now let's squeeze that roll a little bit more. Curl tailbone a second time. Pull low belly down. And then let it up. Inhale the head down as you let go of some of that pressure in the legs. However, as we keep going through this, just note how the development of this, this energy, this intensity, how it, how it feels. Squeeze the roll, curl tailbone, exhale, float the head and the shoulder blades off the ground. Increase the squeeze of legs and roll, curl tailbone a second time. It's a very tiny, tiny move. Pull low belly down. Inhale, head to ground. Getting that breath right where there's feeling, breath and feeling. 
hold that breath for a moment, squeeze the roll, curl tailbone, exhale, head and shoulder blades off the ground, spreading foot bones, increase the squeeze, and now working those legs toward straighten. They might not straighten, but start to strongly straighten them, pull low belly down. Inhale, head to ground. We're not done, <laughs> not even close, <laughs> hang with. Squeeze the roll, curl the elbow and exhaling, float the head and the shoulder blades off the ground and just increase the squeeze. Just finding out, can I have a little bit more of that squeezy experience, pull low belly down, getting really empty as you're squeezing very strongly. And then there's a little relief moment. Inhale, relief comes as we set the head down, as we relax some of that squeeze pressure. All right. Squeeze the roll. Flex and spread those foot bones, curl tailbone. Exhale, head and shoulder blades off the ground. Increase the squeeze, curling tailbone a little bit more. Ooh, low belly down, feeling for the inside of your sacrum. Does it feel blown out? Does it feel distressed? Does it feel like solid, solid behind you part? Let's do one more. Inhale, the head down. Hold, hold that breath. Squeeze the roll. Curl tailbone. Now exhale, float the head and the shoulder blades up. And some of you working with some sacral stuff, you can just start to feel if you can knit and gather the sacral uh, bones and joints. Like you're collecting them with your attentional web, pull low belly down. Inhale, let's set the head down, let's set the feet down. Breathe, feeling if you can reach your hips, thighs, pelvis, sacrum, can you reach these areas with your breath? So you're feeling, you're breathing. It can take a little bit of practice to experience those things together, feeling and breathing, breathing and feeling. But it's so worth it. It's so worth the repetitions. Because once I get that hang of, ooh, I can feel and I can breathe, I can feel and I can breathe, then I can start to do something with those, those feelings. I can start to work with them. It's very empowering. Let's set up for bridge. I've got my feet set hip width apart. My feet are on parallel tracks. So they're both pointing same direction. Reaching my arms down, I can skim my heels. That's how close my feet are to my body. And I've got my block nearby. So remembering that exquisite, deep ujjayi breath, inhale. Growing that breath from the pelvis in the low ribs, lifting the chest toward the chin. And then exhaling, curl. The tailbone shifts up, the buttock lifts, the spine lifts. And in we go. We are in bridge my feet and the backs of my shoulders bear the weight. If you have a block that you're using, turn it the tallest way and slide it under your sacrum whenever you need some support. Now, once the block is underneath, 
it's important that you don't feel scrunched up in the low back. And the way we adjust for that is ensure your feet press the ground firmly and then involve your butt muscles and shift the tailbone up just very slightly away from the block. And just that simple butt move should free up the low back. To find out if we freed up the low back, I don't know, do we free up the low back? Get your breath moving through the low back, across the low spine. Where there's congestion, we often have diminished feeling, sensitivity. And when areas of the body open up, often there's an increased feeling sensitivity in that part of the body. So part of us giving our body lots of space, opening things up, spreading things out, is so that we can increase our feeling sensitivity, our feeling accuracy. So much of our perception is is resting on how accurately do I feel? How completely am I sensing? How much information do I have or is missing? We'll take this left foot and raise it. So inhale. I'm picking that left foot off the ground. I'm drawing knee toward chest. Exhale straightening the left leg, if possible, but reaching that left leg upward. Let's do a simple freeing up move. Can I connect my deep breath? Can I move my left leg up toward the sky? And does that lighten up in my pelvis, in my hip? Does it feel lighter or more open or buoyant? I may have gotten lighter for the left leg and that right leg might be working <laughs> more strongly. Now I can connect to a deep breath. I can feel that strong right leg work. I can feel that light, vibrant left leg working. Can I have it all together, breathing and feeling? Now let's set that left foot down. Now press both feet down to establish that there's weight in the backs of the shoulders. It's not your head on the ground pushing back or steering your body. Let the feet, let the shoulder blades bear the weight. Left foot presses down, inhale, draw the right knee toward your chest. And then exhaling, raise that right leg, lift it up, reach it up. And if you're able, straighten, strongly straighten that right leg to sky. Now get an even deeper breath circulating through this experience. So we open up our body by raising, lifting that right leg up, by reaching that left thigh bone forward. I'm kind of sending that left thigh bone away from my nose. Lifting chest bones toward my nose. And inhaling, let's set that right foot down. Press with the feet. Feel that the blades have your weight. The neck is, the neck and the head are pressure free. And let's lift our butt away from that block. 
remove it from underneath you, begin your descent, I kind of pull my spine down to the ground, the upper back, the mid back, Once you've lowered all the way to the ground, hmm, bend your knees. We'll turn to a side. And use your hands to press up to seated. Let's set up for some dolphin. Y'all still looking great. <laughs> Elbows under shoulders, knees under hips. Now the, the setup for the hands and the arms, we can do one of two things. We can go forearms out in parallel. So it'd be like I line up my middle finger bone with my arm bone. The other way, and this is useful if you have some, some uh, history of injury with your shoulder, is you can interlace the hands and push, plant them down into the ground. Inhaling into the back of the heart. If I choose to send my attention into the back of the heart, can I actually feel there? Can I breathe there, feel there? Curling the toes under, exhale the knees off the ground. Dolphin. So as we maintain these poses, right, we're holding a lot of these poses for, for several breaths. Is it possible to prolong the experience? Meaning, can I maintain experiential mode? Can I resist the urge to strategize or categorize. It gets very, uh, especially with groups of smart people like you, is it gets very enticing to use that super smart brain of ours like, but I could probably figure something out. I can probably figure out why this pain is here or how to wriggle something free. And I'm just going to ask us, can we let the strategizing mind kind of have a, a rest, a morning off? And can we connect to a deeper breath? that our senses can wake up and sharpen. Okay. Now take the left foot, I'm going to use the toes, and wrap them around the right heel cord. Now step gently down onto that right heel. Now as I'm stepping the right heel down, I let the head hang down. So the whole back sheath of connectivity can soften. And now inhale, raise that left foot toward the sky. So I'm depressing my right heel down and reaching back through my left leg. I 
here's our big up level move. When we set the left foot down to the ground, can you keep the knees off the ground? Can you remain in dolphin? Okay, now let's switch sides. The left foot is down. Use the right foot toes, wrap them around the left heel cord, and gently depress weight down. As the heel bone sinks down, feel the head bones sink, melt down. And then inhaling, raise that right foot off the heel, reach it straight back, and lifting it up. Mm-hmm. Now that really active set of legs, there may be some intensity here. Can I breathe plus feel? Feel plus breathe. I know sometimes it's a little more challenging than other times. <laughs> You're doing great. This is great, great practice. Now let's set that right foot down to the ground. Place the knees down so you have a, some reprieve. Now connect to breath. Don't stop feeling, don't stop breathing. This is great. You might be able to Feel what's going on in your arms or your chest or your shoulders or your legs. All right. When we press up to standing, horse stance, horse stance is a wide stance. We're working some rounds of Agnisara. Agnisara is kind of similar to what we did earlier. It involves exhaling everything out. But instead of pulling the belly back once, I'm going to pull it back a handful of times, maybe three, four, or five times. Okay, so let's, let's dip in. <laughs> So I'm in my horse stance. I'm propping hands on thighs, inhaling into pelvis, belly. All at once, swiftly exhale out the mouth. Just like before, lower the chin down, covering your, your front of neck, and draw the belly in, back, and up. And without breathing, let it go, and then do it again. Pull it in, back, and up. Without breathing, let it go, pull it in, back and up. Now you might be er having an urge for breath, so let the belly go and breathe. So we do try to get this work in without gasping. And that will be our attempt. Okay, so when you're ready for another round, here we go. Inhaling, kind of bearing down lightly into the pelvis. It's light. Feel that fullness, ooh, fullness, right? Exhale everything out. <sighs> Remain empty. Feet active. Draw the belly in. Keep the chin down. Let the belly go. Draw it in. Let it go. Draw it in. Let it go. Draw it in. Let it go. Take some breaths. Don't be afraid to take one, two, three <laughs> breaths between these rounds. Let's do two more on our own. So when you're ready, and if you want me to see something, if you're feeling confusion, uh, just wave, create some signal for me, and, I'll, and we can work together on it.
for that last run. Establish, reestablish that deep Ujjaya breath as you straighten your legs and heel till your feet back together. Let's stand at the top of our mat. And we'll be doing some alternating suns. So there's two patterns of sun salutations and we'll alternate them. One may feel a little easier and one may feel a little more challenging. So it's like jogging, running, jogging, running, <laughs> jogging, running. Okay. Inhale, raise the arms, spreading the hand bones, telescoping the ribs up. Exhale, fold, neck relaxed. Inhale, step the left foot back. We'll place the knee down, lunge. Draw the arms up. Hands to ground. Exhale, step right foot back. Now lower down all the way. Pull the shoulders away from the neck. For cobra, set the hands forward. Inhaling, I'll press my belly a little into the ground. Pull chest forward. Exhaling, lower downward dog. Lunge. Inhale, left foot forward. So the right knee is down. Draw the arms up. I'll place the hands down. Exhaling, step right foot forward. Stepping directly into a forward fold. And now inhale, stand. Draw the arms up, spreading the hand bones, the foot bones. Exhaling, hands to heart. All right, here's that other sun, chair pose. Inhaling, bend knees, reach the arms up. Exhaling, fold. You can straighten the legs, placing the hands down on legs or ground. Monkey, inhale, move, press your collar away from your lap. Set the hands down, exhale, step or lightly jump back, chaturanga. Now, if you like the challenge of upward dog, stay hovering, tops of feet on the ground. Inhale, pull the chest forward. So I push and I'm keeping my thighs and kneecaps off the ground. Exhale, downward dog. Warrior one. I'm going to inhale the right foot forward. Yeah. And in the stance, draw the arms up. Hands to ground, exhale, chaturanga. Stepping back, lowering. Inhale, upward dog. If upward dog's a little too rigorous for something, just choose cobra. Exhaling, downward dog. Warrior, inhale, left foot forward. Plant the feet, press down through those legs. Draw the arms up, expand. Expanding the ribs, hands to ground. Exhaling, chaturanga, step back to lower. Inhale, upward dog. Exhaling, downward dog. Now, inhale, step or lightly jump. I'm going to step both feet forward. Moving my chest away from my lap. Exhale, fold. So now I let my whole spine, core, head hang down. Chair pose. Bend knees. Inhale, draw the arms up overhead. Lifting chest away from guts. Stand, exhaling hands to heart. So here's that other sun. <laughs> Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold. Inhale the right foot back, lunge. Place the hands down, exhale, left foot back. Lower all the way down to the ground. So we get to put the belly down, a little reprieve, cobra. Inhale, push palms down, pull chest forward. Exhaling, lower down, downward dog. Lunge, inhale, right foot forward. Good, 
Spreading the hand bones, pressing those legs down. Hands to ground, exhaling, step forward, fold. Inhale, stand, draw the arms up. Feet are active, exhaling, hands to heart. And here's that other sun, chair pose. Inhale, bend knees, reach arms up. Reach the arms, lift the chest bones up. Without standing up, <laughs> exhale. Straightening the legs, fold forward, lengthening core toward the earth. Inhaling, uh, chest away from lap, monkey. Exhale, step or jump back, chaturanga. Now, here's where you get to choose. I'm going to say upward dog. Inhaling, come on up. But if you need to use cobra, you know to do that. Exhaling, downward dog. Warrior, inhale, left foot forward. Strong reach through that back leg. Hands to ground, exhaling, step left foot back. Lowering, inhale, upward dog. Exhaling, downward dog. Warrior, inhale, right foot forward. Press those feet down, draw the arms up, lifting through those guts, hands to ground, exhaling, chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog or cobra. Exhaling, downward dog. Now inhale, step or jump, both feet forward, monkey. Exhale, fold, keep the feet active, yet relax through the neck. Chair pose, inhaling, bend knees, reach the arms up. Now feel the chest lifting away from the guts, guts lifting away from lap. Stand, exhaling, hands to heart. All right, connect to your deep ujjaya breath. I'm going to sprinkle in a few spices. <laughs> Inhale, reach arms up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, step that left foot back for lunge. Now, when I step my left foot back, I'm going to keep the knee off the ground. So one, you can keep hands on ground. Two, you can bring hands to thigh. Or three, we can go arms overhead. But connect to your breath to help you feel. And when you feel, when you're having this experience of lunge, make sure you breathe. Breathe plus feel. Let the sensations, maybe the legs strongly working, let those sensations happen inside a larger context of breath. It's not these dissociated feelings <laughs> like out somewhere in the ether, They're right here in our body. Now, we did this wonderful thing in, in bridge. You're pressing with those strong legs. Let's just say we're only here two more breaths. Is it possible to lift your trunk, the mass of your trunk, away from the sensation where it's most incredible? Okay, so if it's your hip and your legs that are really singing, can you lift your trunk, your mass, away from that intensity site. Okay. Inhale, set the hands down. Exhaling, chaturanga. Step back. Now we lower all the way down, belly to earth. So you get a rest. We get a rest. Cobra, inhale. Pull with the hands. Lengthen the mid spine away from the low spine. And just notice, can you feel the difference in your back? Exhale, lower, downward dog. 
Now we do that lunge on the other side. Inhale, left foot forward. Right knee and right heel are off the ground. One, hands on ground. Two, hands on thigh. Or three, hands over overhead. Okay. Now, we also get a little, a little bonus practice today. <laughs> Just what we signed up for. Some of you really practiced at feeling and breathing, feeling and breathing. Great. Now, as you're feeling and as you're breathing, you might possibly notice there's, there's an area that contains much more sensory information than all other places. <laughs> okay. And what you get to do with that is start to make space around that intensity site. So you're letting yourself, it's almost like expanding your canvas a little bit. You're letting ourselves, we're letting ourselves feel that, but just a larger, larger context, a larger space, a deeper breath. Our tendency as humans is when something gets intense, we go narrow, we go tight, we go in, we go defensive, we go protective. And I'm saying, what if we flipped that? What if we got spacious and we uplifted and we breathed and we expanded and we explored? What would that experience be like? Okay, bring the hands down, set the knee down for a moment just so you can adequately curl those toes under. We're stepping forward here. Inhale, step the right foot forward. Exhaling, fold, neck relaxed. Stand, inhale, raise the arms overhead. Exhaling, hands to heart. All right, chair pose, inhaling, bend knees. When you raise the arms, lift the chest, lift the guts. Exhale, fold, straighten the legs, softening through the neck, monkey. Inhale, move the collar, the sternum, away from your thighs. And now exhaling, step back or jump back, chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. Please choose Cobra if you have some low back or shoulder issues. Exhaling, Downward Dog. Warrior two, inhale, right foot forward. Warrior two. Another right leg bent, left leg straightened, and we'll go arms out to the side. Connect to your deep breath. And eagle, exhaling, we'll hook our left elbow over our right. Again, that's left over right. Now, over the course of these next several poses, I suspect that there's going to be a little bit of a buildup, okay, a little crescendo of, <laughs> of sensory experience. And you're gonna get, we're going to have this, these moments to practice bringing ever greater degrees of care and attention and breath and awareness right into that. And I encourage you to just find out what dose, <laughs> what dose of crescendo can be met with 
breath and curiosity and interest. As you draw the shoulders down, this is a great thing to feel the neck, the relief and the openness around the neck. Okay, this will carry us through the series. Now inhale, unwind off from your eagle. Reach arms out to the side. Reverse warrior. Set that left hand on the left leg. Raise the right arm. Now if you're working with some back issues, you may want to pause right here. Simply raise and lift abdomen away from the sacrum. Okay. Now if you don't have any sacral issues or back issues, then arc. So you're creating a little more bias through the right side. So I'm saying we might have some intensity or some buildup, but we need not have any pain. That's important. No pain. Inhale, take that right arm up and over. Once your trunk is vertical, straighten your right leg as we set up for triangle. I edge my back foot in a few inches. And then exhaling, reach through that right arm. Why I'm reaching is to lengthen this whole right side again. Set that right hand down, raise the left. Now, some of you are working with some sacral stuff. Have the left foot turned in and sink that left heel down until you feel the butt activate and so protect. So I think your move here will be how to get that butt to contract and protect the sacral issue. So work on the contractions that help things feel togethered, knitted. Right. Okay, half moon. Bend the right knee. I often like a block for my right hand. I'll put an implement outside and in front of my right foot. So with my right hand and my right foot down, draw the left foot to the height of your hip. Then flex that left foot. And again, press out through the heel. You'll feel how if I emphasize the heel, I end up emphasizing the back of the leg and the butt. It's really good. You give them some good contractions. Now we are moving into vertical splits. So if you have uh, some catchy sacral issues, you may want to put your foot down. First, turn the hips and re-raise the foot. Otherwise, moving your left hand toward the ground, just carefully turn, turn, turn the pelvis. As I'm turning the pelvis, I'm reaching back through that left leg. So nothing feels uh, unsupported. The effort of my legs actually supports my spine and my sacrum. Those ground wires are, there's so much, there's so much to these legs. Now, how's that deep ujjayi breath going? Let's remember that. 
Because remember, we're not grading the experience. We're not categorizing it. We don't have to come up with a strategy. Our work is simply, would I be willing to experience this and breathe? Inhaling, let's set that left foot down to the ground. Set it back like four feet back. Wiggle it back. And we're stepping it into a warrior two kind of pose. Interlock warrior. So I bring my right arm to the inside of my right thigh and my left hand behind my back. So now I've got my right arm to the inside of my right thigh, yes. And when I reach under, Angela, I'll connect my hands. Or if I can't connect my hands, sometimes I can grab a towel or a strap back there. But yeah, if you, you have to come off the, um, the elbow prop. So I get my tricep, my armpit way down there. Sometimes I just grab my, my waistband, so if I don't have a thing, Sometimes I'll just grab my, the clothing by my thigh. There you go. Mm hmm Perfect. Good. Now just slide that elbow off your thigh. So go from here, get that armpit next to your thigh. Yes, now, uh huh, uh huh. Now that right hand, I feed it between my legs, under my legs. Mm hmm. It's under there. That strap is under there. Yes. <laughs> Surprise, pretzels. <laughs> Inhaling the heart forward. And if you end up with that hand on the ground for a moment, that's perfect. That's fine. Right, release from your interlock. When we place the left knee on the ground, please pad the left knee. Just give it a little extra smush. Smush and cush. <laughs> Heel to butt lunge. Left hand grabs left foot. I'm using my right hand on my right thigh for balance, furniture. <laughs> now I'm using my butt muscles here too. And those butt muscles, when I activate them, kind of shifts my pelvis. And it actually biases, helps me bias the front of my left thigh. Now, the sensations, whether they're pressure or burning or <laughs> muscle fatigue or what have you, can we breathe plus feel? Can those feelings occur in a larger context of breath? Big breath container. <laughs> so I'm actually getting my breath to feel larger, larger than these experiences. I'm not dwarfing them, I'm just like big, embracing context. There we go, that's it. You feel how that starts to move, it really starts to. And release. Okay, I'm going to back up. So I've put my left foot down, twisting lunge. I've backed my hips over my left thigh. Inhale, raise that left arm. Exhaling, hook left arm over right thigh. Left arm over right thigh.
Again, I just want to point out some, some generalities. Like if you're a human in a human body, these things tend to apply. Is when we feel some intensity, there's a tendency, tendency to, to minimize breathing. There's a tendency to narrow or harden our focus. Okay? When we harden and narrow our focus, isn't it interesting that's just like a fear response? That's what a genuine primal fear response does. It narrows our focus. It removes options. Right, we get a little myopic. That's great for survival situations. In creative arts and healing arts like this, how do we stay broad? How do we stay soft? Connect to breath. And you can feel that softness. You can embody that softness, and you'll feel your vision change, your core changes, maybe the pose changes. Right. Inhale, let's unwind. Set the hands down. Exhaling, chaturanga. Step that right foot back. Lower. Inhaling, upward dog. Exhaling, downward dog. You know we have those poses on the other side. <laughs> Inhale your left foot forward, warrior two. Reach arms out to the side. And we start off in eagle. Exhale the right elbow over the left. So this setup move. Feel for very gently moving the shoulders away from the ears. And just note how that feels around your neck and your head. Does it give you a little more clarity, space? Right. How does that feel to open up through the back of the heart, back of the neck? Inhale and wind the arms. Reverse warrior, we have a couple of options here. We go right hand to the right leg. If you have any back issues, raise the left arm, remain vertical. So you're going to lift straight up from any impingement site. No, no pain, no impingement, then create this bias or bend. Okay. And the bias may emphasize more feeling through the left side. So we're just going to practice. Ooh, I feel something in my left side. Ooh, I'm going to breathe. What happens when I feel and breathe? That isn't the habit that usually forms automatically. It usually takes a practice like meditation or yoga or something to train ourselves to feel and to breathe, to experience with our whole breathing, living body. Inhaling, bring that left arm up and over. Once the trunk is vertical, Triangle, we straighten the left leg. For me, I shorten my stance a little bit. Now reach out through that left arm. I'm feeling for that length through the left side. Length, 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 length. And then I'll set that hand down. Um, Jen, you might like triangle with the hand on the wall also. Or Bridget, you might like that. So sometimes I'll get right up on a wall and just left palm press the wall. So I can work in that hip 
crease um, groin area without without the the other the other things going on. <laughs> Just like we do um, pyramid, hands on a wall. Also depress that right heel as if through the mat, like you're putting your right heel below the forefoot. That should help turn on some more back leg and butt muscles. Go ahead, stretch it way out, spread those hand bones, reach. Half moon. So we bend that left knee. Inhaling, I'll bring that left hand down to the ground. Here, a block is really sweet. Kay. So my left hand is about six inches to the left and six inches in front. Raise right heel. I'm going to flex this right foot, and just like we did before, I'm going to press out through the heel like I'm sending my heel further away from my hip than my forefoot. Good, good breathing. Really knitting those things together. It's so, so sweet. When you feel and breathe, there is a coherence in, in the collective, meaning all of us working together, it feels more like a unit and less like a scattered group of individual goings on. And yes, feeling plus breathing really does really does change a collective. So good, good on you, good on us. All right, vertical splits. If you have back issues, know that there's a, an intermediary move here. Set the foot down, turn, and re-raise. Otherwise, take the right hand toward the ground, smoothly turning the hips, soften through the neck muscles, Press, reach through that right leg. And I challenge you to keep that neck feeling soft and open, even if these legs are turning to lava. <laughs> even if. We could have lots of different feelings going on in the body simultaneously. If we had three feelings and we were breathing. <laughs> Good, good, good. Awesome. Inhale, set that right foot down. Wiggle it back, wiggle it back, wiggle it back. All right. I think we have an interlock, then the lunge. We'll figure it out. We'll get it all in there. Interlock first. So I have a warrior two stance. Currently, my left arm is near my inner left thigh. And I reach my right hand behind the back. Then, left hand, I feed it under my thigh, right, right between my legs, up and under. Connect. So, Ange, is it possible? Can you put your left hand on the ground, or does that bother the hip? Oh, good. So you feel how your armpit is against your thigh? Good. That's the place from which I would reach my left arm under my thigh. From that depth. Yes, 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 yes. Even if you don't get the connect, it's that armpit near thigh depth 
and your legs will be singing your praises. <laughs> All right, now let's release. Just a couple more. I'm gonna slide some cushion under for my right knee. I know we're getting real close to time, so we might go a little over. Heel to butt lunge. My right knee cushion, my right hand grab right foot. I'm still working with that butt very actively. Remember, if I can free up my body I'm engaging my butt to free up my back. As I free up, as I find where I can become more spacious around these sensations, I'm more apt to feel them accurately. So when the feeling gets to be kind of large or it starts to crescendo, it's like, that's my cue, where, how can I expand? How can I get a bigger canvas? How can I get my breath matching that? How can I give it room to move, to grow, to unfurl, to express, to... Right. I'm giving it lots of room. Giving that sensation lots of room. And twisting lunge. Let's set that right foot down. Inhale, we'll back it up a smidge. Raise the right arm. Exhaling, right elbow over left thigh. Inhaling, unwind. We'll set the hands down. Exhaling, chaturanga. Step left foot back. Lowering, inhale, upward dog. Exhaling, downward dog. Soften through the neck. And gently set the knees down. Let's have a seat. All right. So I realize we're right up on our time, but I'm going to go just a little bit over. Probably not more than eight minutes past now, so... If you need to rest right now so that you can um, move through, perfectly fine, I get it. So I'm back in shoelace. Okay, we're just going to add this shoelace before Shavasana so that you know. And simply folding forward. So I flex my feet. I set the hands down. And just whenever I encounter a little bit of an edge like a a slowing or a halting of progress or movement. I just pause right there. And as I pause there, connect to breath. Just like I let or I feel that breath suffuse through the experience, through the sensation. I can let them mix and mingle. And 
And if there is a yielding, if there is a release or a little bit of a, oh, it's like, to me it feels like when the body sighs, <laughs> but it's like, oh, I might be able to walk in more into the fold more. Inhale, let's back our hands up and walk our trunk up. We'll switch the sides. And we'll do that one fold on this last side. I'm keeping the feet active as I fold. This is a protective move for my knees. Because when I flex my feet, you'll feel, you'll notice. Those shin muscles, they can get a little warm. <laughs> okay? And that actually goes and informs my knee. Okay. And those of you who are expert level feelers, <laughs> as you're experiencing, as you're breathing together simultaneously, bring that experience into the heart. Let the heart field be context. Be the larger canvas in which this experience is happening. You actually feel the, the sensation. Maybe it's the butt, the hip. But you feel it inside the heart field. Inhaling, walk the hands back, the trunk upright. And now let's take that Shavasana. We'll unwind and prepare yourself for Shavasana, add layer or props. The wonderful news is it doesn't require a crescendo of sensory fireworks in order to feel. Feeling, sensing is available at all times. bring our breath and 
this acuity of sensing into the very quiet, into the very stillness We practice feeling and breathing. So the body grows lighter and clearer. And the metabolization of those experiences. If we can peer under and peer in and deeper and deeper, like clear waters, we can perceive deeper, deep, deep, deep into clear waters. It's very still in those deep, clear waters. And if you can contact such a stillness, such a depth, Let that thread through your entire being. Let that vast quiescence wash through your breath, through your field, through your cells, through your body. You can remain here as long as you wish if you would like to move, bend knees. Turn to a side. and press yourself to seated. Namaste.